Mike! Metal Mike! <laughs> Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. The last time we talked about the Viking Age and the Age of the Crusades. We slowly progressed through the early medieval era and now let me take you back in time again. This time we'll go to the 13th century. What we're talking about is the Middle Ages at its finest. The blossoming age of chivalry, of blazons, coats of arms, courts and courtship. And not just warriors, not just bloodthirsty warriors from the early medieval era, but courteous and chivalrous knights. So what exactly did these guys wear? How were they armed for battle? What changes took place since the early medieval period? Let's go and find out. Let's get down and dirty and get dressed up. <laughs> I'm desperately trying to put on these male hose. Well... I know why a knight needed a squire. This is a shitload of work, actually. Uh, yeah. But as you can see, so you need a squire. <laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> Have to find one. <laughs> as as we all know, towards uh, the 13th century, a knight began to be covered in mail, the whole body, including the legs, because he rode a horse, so he needed to protect his legs against swords and other weapons well it definitely definitely did add on weight one hour later <laughs> ah, shut up <laughs> now um, half of it is done I look nice and sexy well this was tied at the back with the leather thongs to prevent it from falling. What's more, the spurs, a very important element of knighthood. Not only a tool for spurring the horse, but also a status symbol. Okay, so in order to be fully armed, I must put on the rest of the, of the mail. Very much like in the 12th century, or like the 11th century, the gambeson again, my favorite part, and then the chainmail, but this is not the end. Just watch. I have an impression that I've done it before. Yeah, me too! It's called the changes in the Matrix. They are full. Uh, yeah. yeah, so as you can see in the 13th century, a knight was virtually all covered in mail. Everything. You cannot imagine how hard it is. Everything? Almost everything. You cannot imagine how hard it is to go to the toilet wearing all this. But I've been there, I've done it. Oh god. War is nothing compared to taking a shit in full chainmail. Uh, now we get we get down to the fun part. The changes in the thir the 13th century included the dress code. Well, you still can encounter helmets like these on the battlefield which were very common, the Norman style helmets. However, well, they are slowly starting to get replaced by this model here, called the pot helmet, because it looks like a pot. And it was, a, it was a type of a helmet used by horsemen mostly. So in other words, knights. Well, you can barely see anything through it. The breathing is not very good either, but it protects your face really well, especially from weapons like lances. Lances, anything that is thrust right into your face. Uh, well, not very comfortable to wear. Let me try it on. Let's see how it works. Well, 
I cannot imagine fighting on foot with this on. But on horseback, I guess so. I guess it's, I guess it's gonna work. Okay. I'll be back to this, but what's more? Something that the Crusaders brought from the Holy Land, from the from uh, from the Crusades, was the tunic. These are the colors and the coat of arms of a knight that uses it. Uh, first of all, it was used during the Crusades to protect the man, the knight, from the hot, scorching sun. So this is made of steel, so it heats, so it heats up pretty quickly, pretty intensely, and this protected it from, from the sun's rays. Shortly after, the knights started using it to display their own colors. It's much easier to tell somebody uh, tell somebody uh, on the battlefield by the colors. You cannot see his face, but you can tell if he's a friend or not by the colors he wears. Same thing with the, with the helmet and this ugly bastard on top, the crest. This was mostly used for tournaments though. Nobody used it really in real combat. Nobody used it in uh, real warfare because it's really easy to, to tear down. Ugh. But in tournament, when you wanted to be cool and show off to the girls, perfect. But now, let us put on the tunic. I told you this was useless in battle. Uh, squire, can you please? Well, apart from this being a very, uh, well, utilitarian element, this was also an element of, of fashion. You have to remember that in those times, there were no uniforms. The knights didn't go to battle uh, dressed equally well. I mean, they didn't get dressed e uh, the, the same way. So, a knight like this wanted his enemy to know he was coming from far away. So, if someone said, well, you're too coward to go to battle, he would always reply, me? Too coward? What are you talking about? I'll get dressed up so well that everybody can recognize me on the battlefield, so I won't escape the eyes of the enemy. I'll show off. I'm coming. So this is the way to, 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 to do it. Well, do I look good or what? And now, now my helmet. Uh, yes. And you know that the knight's supposed to be very generous. Generous. Especially, yeah. Oh, these are just legends. Squire. Yeah. I've already been generous to you. Now, one thing, one more thing. The shield. The shield changes again. No more. A kite shield. This starts bearing the blazon of the knight. Still covering the full leg. Still worn on horseback so this is more or less how it all develops and how it all changes now i believe i'm ready to go to combat 